All right, so for the next steps to remove your rear view mirror, to start anyway, what we're gonna do is take off the passenger side speaker grill, your dash speaker grill here. And once you pop that up, you can set that aside. The next thing we'll have to do is pull off our A-pillar here, the passenger side A-pillar, which is also very easy. You have a couple of plastic covers on the top and bottom of the handle that are concealing two 10 millimeter bolts that are going through the handle. And they're kind of deep in there, so you'll need a little extension. All right, now we can pull this whole panel down and out. We'll set that aside as well. All right, now with the A-pillar out of the way, I'm gonna get the rear camera wire and actually run it up into this area right here and I'm gonna zip tie that onto our factory harness here. All right, the rest of this wire um, will actually have to come up and meet the rear view mirror. And if we have excess, we'll coil that up. We'll zip tie it out of the way before we reinstall all of our panels. From here, we'll take off the rear view mirror and replace it with the one that's included with the kit. Your kit will include two different brackets, depending on your application. We, uh, we have a JL body style Jeep, so we're gonna use this bracket here, which is, looks like a very big tripod kinda. And this is actually gonna replace the factory bracket once we remove that mirror. All right, to start, to remove the mirror, you basically just wanna grab the base of the mirror and spin it. Uh, towards the steering wheel and it'll spin right out of that mount that's up there and we won't need this mirror anymore So we'll set that aside and now we'll have to drop um, This plastic panel up here so we can attach the new mount so in order to do that we'll get the Interior mirrors out of the way and then you can just pull this panel down There you go and looking inside here this panel right here will actually have to remove, which is just pulling this out of the retaining clips. The reason we do that is so we can access um, the three screws that are holding on this bracket here. Once we get this out, we can replace it with our new mirror and new mirror bracket. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do from this point is get our uh, interior panel that we removed from our roof piece here and Grab the bracket that you're gonna need for your specific application. I'm gonna feed the wire through that hole and that plastic piece. Oh, it goes the other way. Put the mirror bracket onto the mirror. Looking at the mirror, you have the closed end of that bracket aiming at you so you don't see um, this big open area here. And what that is actually gonna be for is the wires are gonna go through there and it's gonna kinda conceal it. So from the front, you're not really gonna see anything except for that mirror bracket. But to install that mirror bracket, it does come with a small Phillips screw with a lock washer on it. Make sure to tighten that down. When it's all said and done, this is how your assembly should look like. Now we're ready to pull that bracket off of the roof and uh, we can replace it with this one. All right, to pull this bracket out, you're gonna need a T30 Torx bit and you got three of them. And you gotta kinda spin it to get it out of there. There's a little hook on here that hangs it into your support here. All right, now you can grab your whole assembly here hold it up and put these torque screws back in there. All right, from here you can use a ratchet or a swivel of some sort. I have a skew driver or my angle driver. That makes it a lot easier to get into this tight area. All right, with all three of those tightened up, I'm gonna stick my wire right through the hole there, pull that up and you can grab a little cosmetic piece here you got to kind of fish it around there we go and we can clip that back into place and I'll make sure that this is kind of out of the way there so now with our panel um, snapped into place here you can see we have our holes right here for our retaining clips as well as the factory um, 
roof holes here, more retaining clips. When you're running your wire, you want to avoid any of those clips. You don't want your wires to be pinched in any of those holes. Um, otherwise, two things, you may cut into the wire and your panel won't fit back the way it's supposed to. Grab your main harness for your, um, for your mirror and you have two plugs on here. The smaller of the two is actually your rear camera input. It'll only go in one way, you can't force it because it won't fit. But there's a notch on there, line up the notch with the one in the camera side, just plug it right in. And then we can kind of fish that over towards the passenger side. And I'm just gonna throw a zip tie on here where the factory wiring harness is. Kinda help ensure that our wires aren't gonna get pinched in there. All right, so from this point on, we won't really need our zip tie, at the very least for this wire here. This is our camera wire. We can go ahead and untape it. And we'll have to fish this up to that smaller end of our harness coming out of our camera, or the mirror, rather. Plug that together. And now we can take both of those lines which is our mirror feed and camera feed. And I'm gonna zip tie both of those to that same harness that's running up on this panel here. All the wires are where I want them. And I'll throw Another zip tie a little bit down on this harness. There we go, keep everything nice and neat. And from here, before we move on any further, we can go ahead and reinstall our roof piece here, which is basically just snapping this black back into place. All right, looks good. All right, so what we're left with here now is our three wires, which looks to be three wires, but it's actually only two. One is our big loop from our excess wire that our rear, rear view camera left us with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna run this like it's three wires though. I'm gonna take the wires individually, run it around the lip of the dash here, So it's tucked behind that panel. And up top here, I'm gonna throw a zip tie right around here to hold this whole thing together. I'll throw one more down here. All right, now with our bundle of wires here, what I'm gonna do is Every foot about, I'm just gonna throw a piece of tape on there. That way it's a more organized, easier to work with bundle of wires. And I'm actually gonna take the whole thing and run it back behind the glove box and go towards our center stack. Now we have our main harness here with our three wires that we need to get our power from. We're just gonna run this over behind the glove box over to the center stack and I'll show you how to tap those wires in. All right, from there you can just run these wires right underneath the dash going around that corner. And what we're actually gonna do is pull this glove box down so we can hook up those wires with some zip ties back there. So the way to pull this glove box out is when it's in the down position here, you have the arm on the side here. 
You just have to pull up on that arm, you'll hear it snap, and then you can set that out of the way. And then up top, inside the glove box. All right, up top, inside the glove box in the center, you have a tab that you just push up to clear this, then you can pull the whole thing out of the way. All right, now from here, we're gonna run our wires up through the center here. That should be big enough to fit our module. And we'll come across. And I'm gonna throw a zip tie up here to hold everything, hold everything up when we're driving. All right, now from here, we're ready to remove parts of our center stack here. Um, we'll remove the climate control and the lower panel here to gain access to the back side of this. This is where we're gonna um, be stealing our power from to power that mirror. All right, so to remove our climate cluster here, you just gotta get your panel tool, stick it in a, any edge really and pop it free on the driver's side here. Your lower knee bolster panel kind of overlaps it a little bit. You can pull that out. All right, once this is pulled down, you can unplug it and set it aside. What we're really after is gonna be uh, back here. And all that's holding this in is a bunch of retaining clips and this one Phillips screw. Um, also, we installed a trailer brake controller on a previous episode. Um, so we don't have our power port here, but we do still have the power port wiring. And for this install, I'm gonna be utilizing that to get some power to our camera and our mirror. All right, we'll pull this up and out of the way. And this harness right here is what we're after. We'll pull this off. And right here, we have our power port connection. This is our factory uh, power port wire or cigarette lighter plug, um, which we already tapped off of with an easy DC, uh, which we carry on our website. And for this install, I'm actually gonna be using another easy DC to get an ignition uh, power source to our mirror. So. This is not included with the kit, but it will be um, an option on our website. You can add this with the um, full view rear view camera kit to make life a little bit easier. All right, and that simple to give you um, ignition and a ground source. Now all we need is a constant power source, which is what we're gonna steal off of this harness here. So the wire we need is this one right here, the red with the green stripe on it. Um, if you're looking at the back of the connector pointed forward, it's gonna be the number one pin here. And that's gonna give us our constant power. To splice into that, we're gonna use a posi tap. How you use a posi tap is you unscrew one side with the grooves in it, which is the gray side. And as you can see, on the other end has a piercing needle. And what that does is when you screw it down, it pierces that wire and it makes a connection without actually cutting into the wire, it's just piercing it. The other end has nothing. This is what you're gonna attach your open end wire into. You're actually just gonna feed the uh, stripped back wire right into the top there and tighten that down and that'll secure your connection. But from here, we'll run our wires up into this cavity here so we can make all of these connections. All right, before we run our wires back to the center stack, what I'm gonna do is because we're tapping our wires in, we do not need um, these fused connections here. I'm just gonna cut all three of those off and Essentially, that's all I need right there. And I'm gonna take this and above your glove box arm here, you have a little plastic um, mount holding this on. Right forward of that is an opening that goes straight your center stack area here. So if you can manage 
can kind of fish everything in there. Just like that. There we go. All right, and that'll keep your wires tucked away from anything moving back there and give you plenty of slack to connect your, your connections. All right, now with our wires fished up in here, we can go ahead and make all of our connections. Um, the yellow wire on here is for your constant power, so we're gonna tap the yellow into the gray connector here, the one with the red and green stripe. That'll go straight to there, so we'll strip this back a little bit. Twist that up. So all I did was fold over the wire, and twist it, make it a larger surface area so it makes a better connection. And you don't have to remove this all the way to make the connection, you just gotta loosen it. Stick your wire in there so it can't go anymore and then tighten that back down. And tug on it doesn't move, you made a nice connection. Now we'll splice these back and butt connect those to the wires on our Easy DC. All right, all our connections are secure. So now I'll basically stuff all this stuff back in here and start to reinstall all the panels that we removed earlier. All right, from here, we'll go ahead and reinstall our glove box. Uh, the dash panel here that we removed earlier, we'll reinstall that and our A-pillar trim, as well as our speaker grill. All right, so we just got finished installing our rear view mirror uh, dash camera combo. Um, it does come with a SD card, so make sure you plug that in there um, so you get the dash cam capability. Uh, we're gonna go take it for a ride and test it out.